everyone, welcome to day four of my holiday card series. Today I'm going to be creating a toy shop pop-up card that lights up. And I'm going to be using the A7 storefront pop-up, the new toy shop add-on die set. I will use the windows and curtains from the coffee shop add-on. I'll also use a little lantern from this set. And then I'm also going to pull in the German Christmas house add-on. I'm going to use the garland, the wreath, and then one of the bows included in that set. I went ahead and die cut all of my base pieces from the A7 storefront die set. I cut two of the bases, um, one of the roof connectors, and then I cut the roof once from red cardstock and once from cream. I'm going to offset the banners on the roof to create kind of like a candy cane stripe on my roof. So you can see I took the window shadow die from the coffee shop add-on and the door shadow die from the original A7 storefront die set and I cut through one of my bases. That way you can see through the card. And I went with the coffee shop window because that one's the largest one and I wanted to put as many toys inside the window as possible. Speaking of toys, I did die cut every single image from the new toy shop add-on and I did use all of them for this card. I'm going to decorate the entire store all the way around. So I'm starting by paper piecing the toy shop sign. I die cut it once from glitter green cardstock and twice from heavyweight white that I'm adding behind the glitter just to pop it up. And then I'm going to glue the words onto the storefront sign that's included in the original die set. I'm also going to add some red pearls where those holes are on the sign so they kind of look like they're nailed onto the roof. And then here are all the tiny little pieces that are going to decorate my store. Here are the lanterns from that coffee shop add-on. And then pretty much everything else is from the toy shop add-on. I did cut a couple wreaths from that German Christmas house die. I'm going to add those to the windows and the door of my toy shop. I am going to show you all of the paper piecing. I sped it up quite a bit. And there are a lot of small pieces here. So I do like to use those bowls that you can see on the top right. That just helps me keep everything organized and also helps me not lose any of those really tiny pieces. There's small stars for the train. There's layering pieces for the tiny teddy bear. So those bowls help me not lose anything, which I really have been enjoying lately with these super detailed cards that I've been making. You can see there's even tiny little bows for these presents. I did cut extra presents for my card today, but everything else I die cut once. And most of these dies have all the layering pieces included. The only dies I die cut multiple times were the train and the stack of books, just so that I could have different colors as the main base image. I wanted to have four different colors of books stacked on top of each other, and then I wanted uh, two different caboose colors for the train. So I will have to cut apart some of those pieces in order to get some different colors on that. And you definitely don't need to include every single toy, um, especially if you only decorate the front of your storefront. But you guys know I love all the details and I especially love decorating my storefronts all the way around. I really like that 360 look that you get with a lot of our different pop-up dies. Oh, I guess I did the same thing with the block of letters too. You can see I'm just cutting apart the main image. I cut a red and green block that I'm going to glue on top of the yellow. And then I'll do the same thing with the books here. And then for the doll, you get the hair separate, the shirt, and the skirt. For this rocket ship, you get the little window. The drum set, you get these two top and bottom pieces that adds a little more detail. And you might recognize some of these images in this set. I combined a lot of the toys from my previous stamp sets. So the doll, the train, and the rocket ship are from my Christmas market stamp set that I brought out 
um, in 2020. And then the rocking horse and the drum set are from the Nutcracker 6x8 stamp set that we brought out last year. And those images were so small and I felt like you couldn't even really see them on the set unless you looked very closely. So I was really happy that I was able to redraw these toys and make them larger. They're still really small, but you can definitely see them more on these cards. So here's that train I was talking about. I cut the uh, front of the train from blue and then I'll have a green and yellow caboose. I went with primary colors just because I feel like that's what toys look like these days. They're in bright, colorful colors. But the majority of my color scheme here is red and green. I did die cut the tiny, tiny details of the train from gold mirror cardstock. Again, you probably don't need to go this detailed unless you want to. And there's even some stars that you can add to the caboose trains. So I'll go ahead and add those. I cut those from gold glitter cardstock. And the wheels are also included. So the train is definitely my favorite image from this set. And I'm going to add the train right on the front of my card. I love how that image turned out. And then here are the stack of books. I did use a lot of craft and cream as my neutrals for my card today. I didn't add any white. Um, because I knew I wanted to kind of create a candy cane roof, but I didn't want it to be stark red and white. So I went with cream because it's more warm. And I still got that candy cane look, I feel. All right, and then I'm going to pull in my favorite Lawn Fawn stamp I use all the time for interactive cards. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is going to be a light up card. I'm going to use one of the push here sentiments from that set and white heat emboss it on the bottom of my door. I uh, stamped it towards the bottom center. I'm going to glue off the tab to the left of the door. That allows you to open and close it. At first I thought that's what I wanted, but I knew my battery was going to go behind the door so that wasn't going to work. So here I'm adding acetate behind my window cutouts and I'm going to glue the door completely shut so you won't even see that I cut through it. So if you were to do this card, you'd only need to cut the window part from the base. I went ahead and also added the curtains for the shop. And this door is from the original A7 storefront die set. There's also a rounded door from the new gingerbread add-on. And I did post a video showcasing that add-on in my last video. So I'll link to that if you want to check it out. It's another storefront, but it's decorated as a gingerbread house. I really love this storefront die. When I first created it, it wasn't like one of my all-time favorite pop-ups. I really liked it. But I feel like out of all of them, this is the most versatile. And you can get so many different looks with it because of the add-ons that we offer. We have a coffee shop, a flower shop, uh, a surf shop, and then next year we're gonna bring out two more add-ons for Valentine's Day. So this is definitely a set that you'll be using over and over again all year round, and it is a pricier die set, but they're so fun to create, and they're pretty beginner-friendly as well. So I am going to add this string of lights to the top behind the acetate, I'm just gonna have a little bit of that peeking through the top. And then I'm going to keep that piece that I cut off, I'm going to use it on the side here. And I cut the lights from gold glitter cardstock. These are from the toy shop add-on. And I think they're adorable. You can add it to the roof as well. I sized the string of lights to work on the roof. And then here's that garland from the German Christmas house add-on. I just cut it so that it was the length of the window here. I did die cut the window from the storefront die set, the original set, and then I added the yellow behind it. There is a shadow die that you can add for the windows. And then on the window, I added an, a wreath, my rocket ship, and then one of the taller presents. Those just fit perfectly inside. You can also have these cut through the base if you want. Um, but I knew I was going to add a light inside my card and I wanted there to be some extra walls on this card so that the light can bounce off 
So I added another lantern from the coffee shop add-on and then I'll add my drum set and my stacked letter cubes. And then I'll also add a present. This is a toy shop, so I wanted to add as many toys as possible. And I think this is one of my favorite cards I've made for Christmas, at least this year. I plan on keeping it and adding it to my village for my home decor village for Christmas I'm going to be creating. So I thought for the back of the card where you can write a message, it'd be cute to use this garland from the German Christmas house add-on. And it only cuts a garland to go around the door of the birdhouse. So I needed to finish off the garland to create a, a complete rectangle. But as you can see, it was perfectly sized to go around this panel that I die cut to be a quarter inch smaller than the rectangle on the base. I'm going to add my rocking horse to the left side and I thought about adding a bunch of presents but only went with one just so that there was plenty of room to add a custom message. And then on the side of this base, I'm going to decorate it the same way as I did the first with the lights at the top, that large window with the garland beneath it. And then this time I'm going to add the teddy bear inside one of the windows and then another present in the other side with the wreath at the top. I will add another lantern, my other Christmas tree from the toy shop add-on. And then I think I add some more presents. Oh, no, I guess I used the stack of books this time. So I like the way that that looks. I'll go ahead and glue everything down. And you can add ornaments like little pearls to the garland if you want. Poinsettias would be cute. I just think it wasn't intended, but that garland fit perfectly as a frame for that spot to write a message. So I am going to be using Amanda's single lights this time. I think they're new or new to me at least. And what's nice about them is there's no wires. So you literally press the button and it lights up, which I love. And I bought a bunch of them. So I know for my recent cards lately in my video tutorials, I've been using tea lights just because they are so easy and you just flip them on and they stay on. And I do think tea lights are great for home decor, but you can't mail them. So Amanda's lights are completely flat so I'll be able to mail this card. So I think for my upcoming videos, I'm going to be using more of her lights and because I do have to give out a couple Christmas cards, I guess, for Christmas. Most of them I keep, but I do want to hand out a few this year and her lights are perfect. There's also going to be a light up hop on November 11th where there will be Scrappy Tails design team members and Pear Blossom Press design team members featuring our pop-up lantern and Amanda's lights. So when I designed the lantern, I had her lights in mind the whole time. So I'm really happy that she agreed to collabing with me for that hop. So again, that'll be on November 11th. Amanda's going to be giving away a $25 gift card and so will I. I think it'll be really fun. All right, so here's that candy cane roof that I was talking about. And instead of doing red and white, I went with red and cream because it's more warm and it matched better with the colors of my toys. I will say at this point, I was getting a little bit worried that it was looking kind of circus-y. Um, but I was kind of committed to the look, so I kept going. Luckily, when I put it against the base that I just decorated, I really liked how it looked, but definitely by itself, it does look like a circus tent. And especially when you add the lights, because I was debating if I wanted to add those. As soon as I put them on, I'm like, nope, that is way too circusy. But as you can see, it fits really nice with the base and the curtains that are on the base. So I love how this turned out. If you want something more subtle, you can maybe just do a dark red and light red stripe or just do a solid colored roof, which is what I do 90% of the time, but I wanted something different this time. All right, so here are my two bases completely finished. One of them has that die cut window that will be the front of my card. I'm going to attach each together, creating this long strip. 
I'm going to add my double-sided tape to each of the half inch tabs. I did use my shirt to uh, get the dust off the acetate on the window. Then I'll reinforce the score lines and meet each end together. I hear I realized when I was folding it that my acetate was overhanging my score line, so I just cut that off. And then I can go ahead and close the card, and it creates this tool toolbox shape. So now that the base is done, all we have to do is add the roof. So I have my connector here. I'm going to fold one triangle away from me and one triangle towards me, and then I'll add my glue. I do suggest using double-sided tape. I did get a little lazy here. But as long as one triangle's facing you and one's facing backwards, you can line it up inside the base, lining up the points of the triangles on the connector with the points of the triangles on the base. And then you're gonna be left with this half inch tab at the top. It doesn't really matter if it's facing you or facing away from you. You're going to attach the roof the same way. I am at this point going to add my double-sided tape just because this is the only thing that's holding my roof to my base. I'm also going to add glue just in case I have to wiggle it around and center it. But you're going to flip your base upside down and line up the score line on that half inch tab on the connector with the score line that's on the center of the roof. And then you can close it, fold all the score lines, make sure it's nicely reinforced, and then you'll have your roof at the top, which is really cute. Now I have my bridge. This is included in the storefront die set. I'm going to add it to the bottom of the card, pretty close to the front. I don't want my toys to be too far back. So I'd say it's only about half an inch from the front of the card. Inside I'm going to add my stack of presents and my doll. I will go back later and add some more, but I thought this was all I wanted at the time. Here are those single lights that I mentioned from Amanda's Pear Blossom Press Easy Lights. I literally just put the battery into the base and it lights up. And I'm going to add it right behind my door where the push me button is. And I'm going to use my strong U-line double-sided tape. I'm going to add the tape to the battery uh, area. And it's a little bit raised, so it's going to uh, slightly lift off from the back of my door and radiate that light. I don't know if radiates the right word, but it's going to allow it to glow and it won't be too close to the door because that battery is about a quarter inch thick. All right, so here's where I decide I do wanna add a couple more presents just to fill that bridge and kind of hide it. I didn't want any of the red showing. And then I also added another set of lights to the back of the card. I didn't, I just glued it to the base. And then here you can see it lit up. It is so fun. I'll turn off the lights. And I love how easy it is to add that in. I literally, it took 20 seconds to add the light in and it completely transformed the card. It was already really cute, but now it's even cuter. And I love that this card can be mailed. Here I'm gonna show you all the way around what it looks like. Let me know what you guys think. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will have everything I used linked in my video description. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I am going to Vegas this weekend. So the next time you'll see me, it'll be for the light up hop on November 11th. All right guys, thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time. Bye.